Hey there, before the start of the episode, I want to let you know the new Gentlemen's Weekly Watch Pick, and this time it is the Tissot Bridgeport Automatic Chronograph. Yay, finally, not a Rolex. It's been a Rolex for the past few weeks, and this time it's a Tissot. What's so good about this Tissot, first of all? The size, 37 millimeters, sweet spot. It's a sub 40, not too small, not too big. Sub 40, perfect for thin wrist people. It got a coin edge bezel, just like a Oris Big Crown Pointer date. And it also uh, has an 18 karat rose gold bezel and transparent case back. You know, when you spend money on a watch, a transparent case back is always nice so you can look into the movement so you can see whatever you bought, right? The whole watch just gives out a really sophisticated and elegant vibe, kind of that scholar vibe. This watch is priced at $9.55, so if you click the link down below in the description, you can go check it out right now on Bob's Watches. And it's 100% certified, authentic, it got a warranty as well. And if you're not 100% satisfied, return watch in three days for a full refund. Thank you guys, and let's roll the clip. Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Gentleman Pursuits podcast. My name is Ryan. Oh, uh, everyone's doing great, staying healthy, staying hydrated. It is currently really early in the morning for me, so I apologize for if my voice is not as loud or as bright as usual. And today, once again, we are joined by Gareth with us. How are you doing, Gareth? I'm very well, very well. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you, too. It's been a while, right? When's the last time we did an episode? Like two weeks ago? Like three weeks ago? maybe yeah two three weeks ago yeah something like that yeah and then that's going to a second lockdown (laughs) oh really looking that way yeah but that's a it's another story that's for another podcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah and uh, ever since the last episode where we talked about vintage grail right if i remember correctly that's what we yeah we did it's a really fun episode it's a really fun episode, and in between that, we texted each other uh, a little bit back and forth about the new Rolex drop, which is something that we're going to touch on today a little bit, just our thoughts on it. But today's main topic is going to be our favorite, our top picks in the 2020 new releases. And so we're going to do this little little um, guessing thing again. We each picked out seven to eight watches, and we're going to talk about four of them. So I'm going to guess, and he's going to guess which one I'm going to talk about. So why don't you start first? I'm going to okay. I'm going to okay. I'm going to. Um. Wait, how? Okay, from your list, I'd say the first my yeah. first guess would be. The Long Jeans Heritage Tuxedo. Uh, well. <laughs> oh, right. oh, you didn't go for that. I was so sure. Damn. <laughs> I did. I, I mean, you know, I, I put both of those um, watches on my list of like favorites. Um, the Chronograph and the Freehander. They're just, I think just Long Jeans are doing such nice work at the moment. They're just such beautiful, simple watches there. Yeah. They're kind of vintage, but have a kind of a modern touch to them. They're really well constructed. I've sadly not seen those in the flesh yet. That's the, um, but I still love them. I still hanker after them. Um, probably won't buy mm. one with um, <laughs> lockdown, having just bought a watch. But uh, but they, they, they're just really right, really right, 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 right. Done. Oh, oh my god! And I think long time you about. Doing... I haven't asked you about your new oh. watch. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Should we save the story to the end? <laughs> Until we get near the end? Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we've got to touch it because there's a little story to it. Um, I just think that everything that Long Jeans is doing at the moment is really, really nice. And they're a really good price point. They're about um, £1,600, which is about 2000 US. So uh, it's a lot of watch for the money. I mean, uh, what are your feelings on those? You mean the tuxedo? Yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Actually, I put it on my on my list too. To be honest. So you did. I, I see. Did I did I put it on my list? Yeah, I think I put it on my list. You yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think you you introduced this watch to me like a while back, and at first I was kind of like I don't hate it, but I don't know how to feel about it. But recently, I just have been 
drawn towards really thin watch, like watch that sits on my wrist really well, which is thin and small yeah, watches. Yeah, yeah. And this is just the black and creamy white, I'd say, and the silver. Um, they blended together really well to make the silhouette to look even slimmer. So I really love this watch. But that's no, also yeah, not beautiful. one of my picks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just so beautiful. It's kind of very yeah. simple. It's elegant. It's kind of dressy, but overdressy. You could probably wear it, you know, casually as well. Like maybe swap yeah, yeah. strap out for a NATO and go full casual. Go full cash. But I, yeah, I really liked it. Really loved them. Uh, as I so, said, I love everything that Longi is doing at the moment. So is that uh, one of your first pick or which one? It is, yeah. It is, yeah. Okay, okay. It is. You're correct, and it's like I am correct. Hell yeah. So okay, between between (laughs) the one with us with a sub, I think that's a sub second. Is that a sub second dial in the yeah six o'clock position? Yeah, between the sub second and the chronograph version, which one do you like more? I think they're gonna go the uh, sub second. I think it's just simpler. Mm. More classic. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Indeed. I'm not indeed. a massive chronograph kind of guy. I don't. I, I don't actually own any chronographs. So, hmm. so that's fair. Shortlisted two in my. Uh, but yeah, but I just think it's yeah, it's just so elegant, so nice, and such good for, for the money. So, yeah, beautiful. So, do you want me to have a little guess at and what you would have picked? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm gonna go. You go with the Cartier Santos Dumont because I just think you love them. You've mentioned them like. <laughs> Every time I I, I love them, but I did not plan to talk oh. about this Cartier Santos Dumont. Actually, I was torn between this watch and another watch, uh, which one I should oh. talk about. But I feel like this Cartier Santos Dumont is more like a gimmicky thing instead of like a oh my god, it's such a new thing. I uh, really love it kind of thing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Well, uh, yeah, I think they kind of they kind of reinvent the world, don't they? Continuously, yeah. and then they bring the same. It's a bit like the Porsche 911. You know, it's the same car every time, but it's but it's still a classic. Uh, okay, to be honest, I shouldn't have said that because that, now that makes me look like a hypocrite because I want to talk about this watch. Is that I the first watch I'm going to talk no. about is the Oris Micron. <laughs> I'm sorry when I I'm sorry to say it's all gimmick. Um, no, the reason why I didn't want <laughs> to talk about the Cartier. Watch. Okay, <laughs> okay, my bad. That's my bad. That's my bad. That's my bad. For for, um, the reason why I didn't talk about the Cartier Santos Dumont is because, um, so I went through the first three watch that I want to talk about, and then finally, when it comes to the Cartier Santos Dumont and another watch, I just find I just found another watch to be, uh, more beautiful and more yeah. my thing. So I talked about another watch. But my first watch is the Oris Big Crown Point of Date, Roberto Clemente. First of all, legendary baseball yeah. baseball player, got the gimmick down. Uh, I, remember, I, remember, I remember saying that the Oris, I, I remember saying that Oris got a great collection in their roster, but it's just not, I'd say persuasive enough for people to purchase it sometimes. Like they have really good watches, yeah. but I don't know for some reason just flies under people's radar and i think it's because there's so many other choices at that price point isn't there? such a difficult price to be you know long jeans and seiko there's a lot of competition but they, they are lovely always watches that's true but when it comes to like, let's say that price point um pilot watches i think or big crown port a day is really outstanding and yeah, this absolutely. watch the brown and brown and white brown and creamy white combinations quite yep. rare i'd say light brown is a color that i don't see a lot of watches um utilizes i don't know why yeah and big crown porter day is easily one of my favorite series of watch on earth this color variation is just really lovely once again coin edge bezel font everything really easy on the eyes and another remark is that oris as a company is so outstanding that they have a cost to change the world with almost every watch they put out so apparently a lot of the watch they put out behind the watch they uh help whatever organization that fits the theme so there's one that helped with the coral reef and then this one the roberto clemente foundation and it's a foundation that 
uh, it's an organization for disaster relief and introducing baseball to at-risk youth. And also, I just learned that this, uh, I just learned that Roberto Clemente, he was enlisted in the Marine for six months, and therefore the foundation also dedicated part of their community outreach outreach to veterans. And Oris is doing like helping the foundation to do all these, and I just. It's a really beautiful watch and meaningful watch, I'd say. So, my top pick for wow. 2020 is yeah. <laughs> that's so me really... just sitting right along you. Just say it look, it looks pretty. Good. <laughs> I'm not sure about the watch I picked. No, like yeah, first things first. Yeah. The... <laughs> it looks pretty. Well, first things first. I'm British, so, so um, <laughs> my knowledge of baseball ends with Babe Ruth. Um, so you know, I, I, I had no idea either. Roberto and Clemente was, um, but I do now. I, I, so I did go into the Oris boutique last week and try this watch on oh and that's the watch you're talking nice about as it looks in... yep and it is as nice as it looks in the pictures the um i really like the, the brown kind of brownish grayish numerals it's just really unusual and the, and the, the face yeah the dial is a kind of um just kind of eggshell off white creamy it's really nicely constructed yes, it's a beautiful, yes. beautiful watch and it's a really cool strap as well it kind of, which has the feeling of a, like a vintage baseball mitt i think they're called yes yes it's yes really nice and you're you're, you're right that they um, most of their watches you know it's connected with good causes i also believe that they're changing all their packaging to make it completely recyclable Oh, because we were like, okay. yeah, some of these ridiculous like watch boxes. Oh, I'm sorry, not recycled, but made of recycled um, products. Mm. You know, most of the watch boxes you get are kind of ridiculously massive, and you know, go up in your loft and probably stay there for twenty years. But these are <laughs> yeah, kind that's of true. Yeah. Unless you unless you flip it, unless you're a flipper, which you and I are not. But um, yeah, it's really nice in the in the metal. You're right; they're really well constructed. It's just beautiful size as well it's 40 mil but it's yeah. kind of small 40 mil it doesn't feel large yeah i love it yeah yeah i i love it i love it so much so um i'm going to make a second guess on your list Go on. i am going to guess the um i go with the sin u50 <laughs> I didn't pick that. I mean, I've shortlisted it, but I didn't pick it. It was so okay. close. It's like, uh, uh, uh. If I'm going to have four, you know what? I mean, I'm going to go to the one directly below it in the PDF. Not anyone listening to this knows the PDF I'm talking about. Anyway, it's the Lorient <laughs> Ferrier Grand Sport. Oh, I, ne I've, I never would have thought that you went for uh, the Lorient Ferrier. <laughs> I never would have thought that. Yes. <laughs> so nice. Look at it. <laughs> It looks I mean, so this nice. It's probably it ridiculous, like forty thousand dollars or something, but it's probably just it really beautiful. It's a, it's another free hander with a six. Um, oh, there's a theme here. There is a theme. That's making it too easy for you. With a six o'clock sub seconds. Um, it's really, really. It has that kind of Genta integrated case uh, bracelet thing going on, but but a more uh, kind of vintage style loom. It's like a grey black face a dial with um with a cream loom. I just think it's really elegant mm. and yes, yes. You know, integrate. I'm not. I'm not really a sort of uh, Royal Oak fan, but I suppose it's kind of on those lines as well. It's a tourbillon. What's interesting, the tourbillon you view from the back rather than the front, which makes it a little bit less mm. understated for that kind of watch. I just love what Laurier Ferrier, you know, Lauren Ferrier are doing the beautiful, beautiful watches. A little bit yeah, out of my actually, price range at the moment, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, they're, they're, they're really nice. I mean, it's like a one watch watch. This is it. you could just wear this and just you don't need to buy anymore. That's that you're done, right? I'm I'm going to say something that may sound controversial, but I feel like this oh, wow. grand it, <laughs> this grand sport. I feel like I'm and I'm guessing that part of their. Like I'd say motive on making this watch is because they want like a 5711 replacement. This watch in, yeah. and yeah, in a lot of ways look exactly like the 5711. And yeah. I feel I I think they're trying to draw people that are on the 5711 wait list to this watch and like as a replace <laughs> I'd say a replacement <laughs> or an alternative. <laughs> is it isn't everyone trying to do that? I mean, these ridiculous wait list stories. I mean, um, yeah. I know I mean, my I friend for I know my friend is on the wait list. 
Like he's a really, a really、right. rich kid. Yeah, his father and he, himself is on the wait list. But yeah, even like he's like one of the most like the richest、uh, person I know in my social circle right now. But he is still on the wait list. So I don't know. I really don't know what it takes to actually get a,、wow. get、yeah. your hands on a fifty seven eleven. So, but yeah, this watch is really. I, I, I really like the vintage loom. Like the thing that stands out yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Is the vintage loom, and also it is more like, as you said, it's really it goes well with、um, like a casual dressy vibe because that's usually yeah, what yeah. you would go for, right? Just put on a blazer and that's yeah, it, a blazer t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's kind, kind of understated, but you know, it's just like you know. Ridiculously expensive watch, and it's nice to have something like that. Other people wouldn't notice, you know. You know, Patek, you know, everyone's、yeah. gonna know what you're wearing. A Royal Oak. It's like you don't want to be the idiot in the Royal Oak in the room, you know. <laughs> so yeah, this is also like yeah, this is like kind of low key, but once you spot it, it's like oh, it stands、yeah. out. Like it's something different. Yeah, you'd walk across the room and go, "What's that? What's that? What's that?" You know. Exactly. You exactly. So, just a、Isn't、side it, note.、Um, yeah. I did the show with、um, Fifth Wrist Radio.、Uh, oh, fantastic! How did that go? Yeah, last it went really well, and the host uh, Anthony uh, he mentioned that the next episode, or I don't know when, he's going to interview this person、uh, from Canada. His name is Don Rogan or something like that, and he's going to talk、okay. about his P P O one Tudor P O one. Oh wow! Okay, I love、yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, discontinued. Because, I believe it's discontinued. I'm not know for sure. Know not really sure, but yeah, he, because you you talked about how you can spot it across the room, and I was like, oh, that reminded me of the P01. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you definitely okay. Miss the P01. It's massive. <laughs> it, it is. It is, and it's so unconventional looking too. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Proceed with your well, second、um, guess. Yeah. Well, I think you might go for the Mont Blanc. 1858 GSV. <laughs> yes, that's a given. That's a given. <laughs> yeah, that's a given. <laughs> you are right. I went with the Mont Blanc 1858 GSV. I even talked about this、uh, watch on the Fifth Wrist、um, episode. Oh, you did. Yeah, first, yeah. yeah, I actually did. And because, first of all, full of character. This watch is some like a watch that are not. Overly done with flair, yeah, and you can kind of feel like it's you can like obviously you can see it's not just any other watch full of character. And first of all, Geosphere is the keystone in the 1858 series, and it's dedicated to the World yes, Seven Summit、is. Mountaineering Challenge. So gimmick check again. <laughs> <laughs> It's forty forty two. Yeah, it's. A, I have to go with something with gimmick, man. <laughs> it needs a story man, for me to actually buy. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a gimmick thing. That's your. That's your staple, right? Yes,、yeah, my stick. And it's a it's a forty two mil titanium case, blue and white. Wow.、Okay. And really, really clean because it's literally the color of glaciers, which is, you know, snowy mountains, mountaineering challenge, whatever.、Yeah. Thing and of course the most important feature of the watch is、uh, the two turning hemisphere. Literally, just、uh, a, a nerf, like a, a literal map on your wrist, just turning. Really、oh, insane,、wow. I'd say. Yeah, and this watch instantly reminded me, literally reminded me of winter, but not you know the not the Christmassy fireside winter, but. You are stranded on an island, kind of、That's、winter, <laughs> real winter, <laughs> real winter. <laughs> so adventuring, yeah, yeah, but adventuring.、Uh, ice cold, sharp edge cutting, a full of character once again, and yeah, this is this. When I first saw this watch, this kind of、uh, weirdly reminded me of the Doxa gilt dial or any gilt dial chronograph because they share. The similar kind of com- complexity, but not too、mm-hmm. overwhelming,、yeah. not too tiring. So, but this is way more. It's like advanced gilt dial. So I really love this. 
it's really yeah it's lovely the color your eyes kind of blue of like um glacier ice isn't it that kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. you see on icebergs if you're lucky enough to go to the arctic it's yeah they're really I mean, mont blanc's a really interesting brand isn't it i'm not sure where they f fit really i do like that what they do but this is really lovely i love that color. i feel like mon i feel like mont blanc is has been doing really good recently they weren't as good before because you usually before when you hear mont blanc it's more of a fountain pen or of course wallets, yeah. right and i feel yeah. like recently they went out of their way to showcase that they are not just like a fashion men style brand but also a watchmaker you know how a lot of people would be so stuck up about oh it's a jewelry it's not a watch but in the end watches yeah. are jewelry right it's just it's just uh of course they you know, need a more... watch just look at your phone <laughs> so, of course. yeah it's, it's just a more artistic approach to uh, a clock right yeah so i think i'm right in saying but i don't remember the name of the person so, so i mean you may have to look it up but the uh, the designer from tudor left to join mont blanc is that not right Davide, someone, I can't remember his name, so oh, I apologize I actually, for listening. Actually, but, yeah. So he, he moved over to Mont Blanc, and that's kind of, they've really kind of tapped into the kind of venture spirit, haven't they? That's what their, their whole yeah. the 1858 is, and the kind of venturous watch, explorer's watch, and they're really, really doing something really nice, I think. This one's lovely, the color's great. Yes, yes, and they and also weirdly, I just I just realized that they have the same hour and minute hand as the Oris. Literally uh, same design. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's a pretty common two thing. cathedral but yeah, this hands watch is super and nice. two six seconds, sub seconds, two six seconds in a row. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. we have a, a pattern. Yeah, we can sort of see the pattern here now. <laughs> You know what? Judging, yeah, I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna trust the math here, and I'm gonna base my third guess on it. I'm going to guess that you went with the IWC Portuguese. Ah, uh, I did. Oh, actually, yes. <laughs> the math works. Yeah, I mean, that's another sub six second. What am I doing? Maybe I just want one of them. I picked all of them. Um, I think that they're so the Portuguese is a watch that. I think it's really classic and simple. It's always much too big, wasn't it? It's a bigger size, it's 43. They're kind of like yeah, yeah. anything that big. And you've mentioned before that you have like stick wrists, I have like semi stick wrists. So I'm not far behind you. So anything over 40 <laughs> kind of looks stupid. I mean, I have a, like a 43 mil Seiko um, 6309, but that's kind of meant to look big. It's kind of, it's not a dressier watch. This Portuguese is, I saw it in the boutique in um, Watches Switzerland when I was there last week. It's just really nicely mm. done. It's really, really mm. delicate. It's like a perfect dress watch, everyday dress watch. Um, it, it's just, very, it's like that kind of 1950s style. It's got a nice, lovely, lovely leather um, strap. And I just love everything. I love everything that I do. IWC have done this year. They've just bought us some really, I think I maybe I picked that because I like the whole range. That's the one I went for rather than mm. just that particular. That's my favorite of everything they've done, but they've done so many nice things this year. They've had a really good year, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and also one thing I love IWC is like love and hate because I hate that how all of their watches are so big. But one thing I love is that they yeah, have exactly. just, I'd say, just like Rolex, they have a really consistent style. They don't really yeah, change a lot. They, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a, it's like their signature. So they change a lot of their movement thing, act like upgrading their watches, but their looks they keep it the same. Yeah, without exactly. they got a yeah, real yeah. style, haven't they? I mean, they did the same thing last year. I think it was last year, the year before the Spitfire, the um, pilot watch. Mm. They reduced that down to thirty nine mil, so that kind of wears smaller <laughs> than the, you know, looks much nicer in that smaller size. It's a sweet spot. This being 40, it's um, white dial, no bezel, so it's going to wear a bit smaller, maybe. The, I mean, the, the white dial might, mm. may make it look bigger. It looks quite big in this picture, but I think that, yeah, the, you just know an IWC watch across the room. Like, it's very similar to a Submariner, you know, similar kind of thing, as you, as you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, I exactly. like the whole range, and I couldn't decide which one, so I kind of went with this, went with that one. And I mean, I, just I uh, more, basing... 
<laughs> just basing on the uh, the note that you mentioned that this is like a casual dress watch it's also yeah. a pocket so remember I, I remember last episode i kind of like mentioned how i don't like i don't really like how every category is like sort of blending together and there's yes. no a clear uh way to tell if it's like a pilot watch or diamond watch or whatever and i brought that discussion to watch you seek okay. and under wow. under okay. the name of Did general get, pursuits because <laughs> i was you get trolled to I was, death first of all first of all i don't know if it's like a, like a, like a, is, a, is that a mistake that i made is, is that a mistake that i made because i registered under the name of gentleman pursuits because i first of all i was trying to be more engaging in the community and perhaps from that yeah, i can okay. yeah. you know reach more people so i thought you know what i'm gonna start yeah, a conversation with people so first of all just really defense i wouldn't say hateful but really defensive comments saying that okay like it doesn't right and then that's that and then after literally one day my account was banned <laughs> what my account what? was banned what? i i don't know what? so first of all the first the first comment under my thread <laughs> this is a good was, story <laughs> <laughs> the first comment under my thread was like you know what i hate more is that when people come on to watch you seek to promote their youtube channel and I was like, dude, okay, first of all, I didn't promote shit. And second of all, I simply st want to start discussion, man. And then, <laughs> yeah, after a day, my account was banned. <laughs> uh, you know what? But, I mean, it's the same thing we see on Twitter and all these people take things too seriously, don't they? I mean, you only have to look at how dinky and they're like, they put a watch on the comments. Some of the comments think just like, we don't like it. Don't say anything about it at all. I just like... You don't have yeah, to comment yeah, yeah. on everything. <laughs> I think it's perfectly reasonable for someone like in your position to uh, go onto a forum and reach out to more people just to gauge the mood of the room. So it informs yeah. what you're going to do on your YouTube channel. I, I totally understand why you would do that. And it's ridiculous to say why you wouldn't. It's just, you you want to know what's going on out there. You want It helps your, yeah. as I say, you, yeah, you gauge what's happening in the room, what the mood is, or, you know, what other subjects can be talked about in the future. But yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, and you were right. Just, I re <laughs> I just like recently, <laughs> I just recently got a taste of the the actual Twitter atmosphere because recent. I'm I'm not sure if you've uh, caught wind, but the Jim Murray whiskey bible recently was under right. Uh, I would say under attack because like before the whiskey Bible is like the, the cornerstone of whiskey reviews. And yeah, 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 recently course. I forgot, I forgot her name, but this I'd say whiskey reviewer or a whiskey ambassador from, from some, from some company uh, pointed out that how the Bible has a lot of sexist comments towards women and how Jim Murray would use uh. like would used the metaphor of having sex with women to describe how the whiskey tastes. And so Ouch. she pointed that out, but she pointed it out and a lot of people backed her up, of course, and said, Oh, now we're not going to yeah, sell the whiskey would. Bible. We don't. Yeah. And then, but still a lot of people would be like, Oh, stop being so butthurt, man. Like, like <laughs> I was like, okay, that's not the point, man. You're missing the point completely. <laughs> yeah. She just pointed out that, that things maybe need yeah. to change. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just, yeah, you just yeah. Get, yeah. I mean, the whole it's industry right. should change. But you're just kind of, I, I, as soon as you mentioned you went on to Wash You Seek, I just thought you're going to get trolled. Because it's like, I listened to another podcast. <laughs> it's the um, Spike First and um, Coffee, Cars and Coffee. I can't remember what the podcast is called. Um, and they were talking about someone, you know, put, put on one of these car forums. They needed to get a, like a turn light for their bike and then everyone said if someone coming back to them say oh you get it from here someone replied ha 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 how do you know they don't make them anymore why are you even bothering to ask it's like <laughs> it's like you got to come yeah, with a negative dude. comment it's yeah, like why I'm saying I don't, negative I don't people <laughs> okay we've got a tangent but it's a good it's a good tangent <laughs> so yeah, i forgot where we're at now oh and you <laughs> you're gonna make the third guess so i'm 
Wait, did I just talk about Mont Blanc or did no? You just talked about you just talked about IWC. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> the third one. You uh, so you're gonna make us、okay. uh, the third guess. I think you might go for the Grand Seiko because I think yeah, because I would. <laughs> That's why. The Grand Seiko is the last the one. Grand Seiko elegance collection. Yes,、yeah. actually, I went with yeah, I went with the Grand Seiko. Boom! <laughs> it's because I would do. It's really nice. It's 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 such yes, a gorgeous、lovely. watch. So,、um, this Grand Seiko is the Grand Seiko Elegance or、uh, no Grand Seiko Elegance Collection SBGW two six two. And first thought is that this is a Panerai Luminor do, but prettier. Yeah, because. Yeah, because Luminor Dew is more, I'd say, the dressier Panerais with shiny、yeah. bezels and yeah, right, and、uh, a crocodile strap. And this is exactly that. You could probably wear this grand. You could wear this grand Seiko as well if you're under six foot six. Whereas it's wear a Panerai, <laughs> you need to be like six foot eight. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah, you have to be Stallone to、uh, wear that watch, man. I don't know who can actually carry carry a watch uh, uh, that big, but yeah, this watch, slim retro. It's at thirty nine millimeters by eleven point six millimeters, so small and、uh, thin. Perfect. And shiny bezel, glossy dial, glossy crystal. And because it's also Grand Seiko, I have to go with it. Just one of my favorite brands. The black lacquer yeah, dial just kind of. Yeah, I love Grand Seiko. The black lacquer dial just、um, make the twenty four karat gold powdered marker stands out. Also, just I think the twenty four karat gold touch is a tad bit extra. Like I don't think you need that. Like. And on、it's、your、bulk. on the markers, <laughs> it's right, and then just、yeah. jack the price、yeah. up. Like I, I think that's a little bit unnecessary. But the movement is just as、uh, just as impressive because it's a Grand Seiko. Of course, we have to factor in the movement. The caliber nine S sixty four with a seventy two hour power reserve, but it's manually wound. Another kind of tiny no for me,、uh, because there's a great chance that I'm going to、You're、forget、not. to wind it before bed or something. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we never wear the same watch twice. <laughs> What difference does it make? I was one of our automatic watches. Why does it matter? Power reserve was like, well, I'm not going to wear it for five days anyway. So, but it's just,、oh. yeah. Is it so, yeah. so? The whole thing's gold. The whole gold case, gold numerals, gold hands. Yeah, it, there's it, also a. I think there's a platinum、uh, variation, a platinum choice too. But this, I went with the gold one. Of course, there is. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you gotta go with platinum. platinum. Yeah,、okay. yeah. I feel like I feel like I feel like if antimatter is the thing that watchmaker can use, they would use it. They would use the most <laughs> like the craziest material out there <laughs> just to、yeah. make a watch. And it is priced at thirty thousand dollars retail. Holy shit! That's a lot of dollars for a grand seiko. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> I mean, they've really kind of. Up in their price, aren't they? I guess. I mean, I guess you, if you know them, you're in the know. So I guess that kind of just. I mean, they, their build quality is justifiable. They're just beautifully built.、Um, on the same day, my little yeah, adventure,、maybe. we get onto watch buying. We went to the Grand Seiko、uh, boutique in、um, Knightsbridge and look at some of their stuff. It's just the construction is just out of this world. And it's like、mm. the, the hand, the, the hands don't have any loom. There's no loom on them. Because they're dress watches, but the way they catch the light, it's almost like they don't need to have loom because they're so、yeah. reflective. Exactly. Just, yeah. Exactly. Also, loom is more. I once again kind of walking into the category uh, uh, topic here. Loom is so such a diving watch thing, and I don't think it would、yeah. suit a lot of a diving watch or aviation watch, right? Because they actually functionality、yeah. wise. Uh, they actually have to use the watch at night, and they require loom to see to tell the time. Before dress watches, someone put loom in a dress watch. I would—it's kind of iffy. Well, it's just, like just, you want you want look at your watch at night. You know, if you're out on a date, it's a bit rude to look at your watch. 
<laughs> what a dress was. Why would you look at it? But yeah, it's just. I cool. guess. I mean, it's a bowl to make it out of you know, solid gold. It's very cool. It's really nice. Real, yeah, really nice. So, the yeah. the strap just completes it. So okay, I'm gonna make a fourth guess here. Go on. You've been. Have you been right every single time? No, you haven't. Nearly once, twice. There you go. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't think you went with a Tudor Black Bay Blue because you just got You're another right, Tudor watch. Um, I would say you went with. No way you went with a Se Seiko Prospects. Okay, I'm I'm going to guess you went with a Gerard Perigo. No, with the Seiko Prospects. What's wrong with you? <laughs> the Gerard Perigo. You went with the it's Prospects. Too much like the. Uh, yeah. Because I think. Oh, just okay. Like, it's, so it's another Seiko. I don't know. Watch like this time. No, they they're lovely. They're lovely, but on the list, I felt like you went with something else. Okay, I didn't. I wanted something a little bit under, more understated, more in the kind of thousand pound range. I just think they're the perfect everyday watch of the four. My favorite is maybe the brown gilt version. Um, is that the third one or the second one? I can't really tell. Yeah, the third one. Third one. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a blue dialed uh, limited edition. I think was sold out in the Seiko Bay boutique, so I didn't get a chance to look at it. I think they're like the perfect everyday watch and they're kind of, if you're a Seiko fan, which you and I both are, they're, they're just kind of mm. up their ante a little bit here. They're a bit more expensive than than the um, the other ranges they produced, but their build quality is much higher, I'd say. Their movements are step yeah. up from the usual. I think it's a 40 hour power reserve or a 70 hour power reserve. Um, they're just really, really nicely put together. Much nicer. Drilled lugs, which is really cool for a dive watch. Quite unusual. Um, mm. 40 mil case. Uh, case wear, re wears really well. Has that kind of 60s skin diver feel to it. It's the, the remake of the, the original Seiko diver. I just think they're offering something really smart. There's a new version of the uh, Captain Willard, which is kind of I toyed with um, putting on this list as well. But I think the um, SPB 143, 145, 147, etc., etc., is a little bit more everyday watch, which I think is um, that's why I wanted that. Yeah, they're really mm. special. I know that the, the, um, maybe James Ray Dinky's been kind of reviewing it and talking a lot about it, and he loves them. I just think, I tried them on and I thought they were really nice, really really nice, and quite a lot for your money. You know, the, the most expensive was I think one thousand, one thousand one hundred with a bracelet. Um, I think it's like a really good one watch. You could wear that watch. You wear that watch or watch me up, and everyone would still like it. You know, it's, just, it's a watch to be proud of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, like one thing. I, I love Seiko's, obviously. I love Seiko and Grand Seiko, yeah, but just want, if they if they can if they can make this happen, that would be just perfect. If they can slightly th make their looks thinner, like not so yeah. like okay, then it not right. So if the watch is not so shield like or shield shaped, then yes. that would be so lovely. One thing that's yeah, I mean, hindering me from actually buying a Seiko is because the lugs are so thick, it just makes the watch look so much bigger. Yeah, I mean, it has that skinned up. I have a um, Aquastar 63 in my collection, which is a similar kind of um, case shape. You're right, it kind of lacks a certain elegance, I suppose, having that kind of figure, thicker lugs, that kind of squared yeah. off thicker lugs. If they were a bit more, maybe a bit more tapered, they might be a bit more elegant. Um, but I just think they're really, yeah. they're understanding their market, Seiko. That's what they're doing. Right? They're, they're kind of yeah, know yeah, yeah. there's collectors out there. There's a bigger, bigger market. They're making these watches for that certain kind of, there's enough people out there now that would spend that kind of money and want those kind of watches. And so they've been really smart in that, um, in that, in that um, aspect. But I see what you mean about the, yeah, the Lux. If they're a little bit more delicate. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's still but really overall nice. still really lovely. Yeah, overall still really lovely. Yeah, they're just okay, they're really fourth? nice. You um, you know, they're, they're yeah. I mean, all of them are. I mean, I think maybe the 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 one for longevity is probably the simple grey dial. But um, for me personally, I'd go with the brown gill. No, go with the brown one. Awesome. What? Yeah, go with the yeah, brown one. Yeah, go with what you want. I don't know. Exactly. Buy what you want. <laughs> 
So I just gotta pick a fourth one for you, which I'm struggling. Can I do all your four? One. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you're gonna guess this. I, I don't know. Let's. Well, there's only two okay, choices. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna narrow down to. Let, let me P narrow down to two. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask. I'm gonna. I was gonna say. I'm gonna narrow it down for you. It's either the Piaget or the Jacquet draws. Which one do you think it is? Okay, I've got Piaget. So I've got like a Piaget, Piaget. I think. Yeah. No, it's not Piaget. It's Jacquet. It's Jacquet draws. Yeah, I've got a more. <laughs> rubbish in this. I went with the Jacquet. A Jacquet draws is because. Okay, so first of all, this is the grand second off-centered chronograph with onyx style. Um, for, I think this is like top, I'd say this second watch that I love the most on the list because of how okay. um, bold and elegant it, look, it looks. And initial thoughts, actually, it look exactly like the MS Della Lune and like the combination of the Della Lune and a resin's watch. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. So you know, resins like to have a little dials on you know kind of diagonal yeah. uh, angle and everything. So I really love that with a super cool black dial. Uh, movement's pretty insane too. Silicon lever, bound spring, everything making. It, move uh, making it run smoother open case back with a very open work rotor and always a good thing in my opinion to have a look at everything that i pay for if i pay ninety thousand a hundred thousand for a watch i would need to look into it because i paid for it don't you dare close it off and big oh, one thing one thing here is that big dial was never my thing because first of all thin wrist another thing is that not a lot of watches with big dial uh, knows or at least mastered uh, uh, at spacing or you know the design on yeah, a big the, dial yeah the right? negative space and, is really nice on this yeah exactly exactly this watch I feel like it took up about like 65 70% of the dial and the negative space uh, just creates a really sophisticated and interesting silhouette and vibe to it and yeah just thin second hand, two sub dial, the name, everything, just really stunning. At th forty three millimeters, which is a downside. All the big sides for you, yeah. But but I'd say I can I can I can look past it. This is a mighty watch. <laughs> so, I'm gonna yeah. be really British about this really british and say it's not my cup of tea um <laughs> but i can see <laughs> i can see why you really like it i mean the negative space is beautiful i mean there's so much just plain black on that dial but 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 yeah, works yeah. really well i mean i love the offset hey but now. one thing one thing is that one thing is that i i've I started to notice that your pigs are slowly walking into the more the dressier direction <laughs> they are yeah i know right um, yes change oh yes change <laughs> this, this is a great watch. I mean, you know, as uh, we're going to go on to want to talk about Rolex, I mean, watch bashing, I think, in a bit. But um, it, it's not a watch that I would buy or maybe even consider, but I can see why someone would, you know, I think it's going weakened. Yeah. Maybe be a bit more like that. You know, you can see why other people would like someone can maybe not like it yourself. But I think we could all learn from that. This just so yeah, elegant. This, this, and our negative space. Is this is like so the well million million dollar Playboy vibe to it. Like you know how Iron Man has like a collection of watches, and he's gonna pick out one watches for a night party or a cocktail party he's gonna go to. This is like the kind of watch that would sit there in the collection. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not your uh, watch to wear while you're buying hot dogs in Walmart. <laughs> I mean, it's you not can. That watch. I mean, you can. You can. You probably should. <laughs> probably cool. Yeah, you know what? Flex on the cashier. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't even know. That's what's. I mean, I guess that's what's kind of nice. I, mean, I guess you would know it was expensive because it just looks so beautiful. But this yeah, is really yeah, jewelry, yeah. isn't it? It really is crossing that line into what he's watching, what he's jewelry. Yes. Yes. This is. This is. I. I'm actually not really faced by the. Oh, this jewelry. This is not watch. Um, uh conversation no, because i agree 100 percent. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. because when it's I say all, sometimes it's, it's, it's when I jewelry. say I love, yeah, it's all jewelry. <laughs> it's all jewelry. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, like I said, you look at one of the time. I look at my iPhone. Tells me the time. It's like 20, 22 minutes by four. There you go. It tells me the time on my phone. Don't need a watch. So that's they're all jewelry. All fashion statements. That's all fashion. But right, that segues into the watch that we hate this year. <laughs> Because oh I swear God. to God, not all of them, not all of them are fashion statements. Some of them don't know what they're doing. No, you tell me about do you, it. Do you want to go first? I, let, so actually, I I'll go what? first because yeah. I got, I got two, I got two picks. Yeah, let me first of all, send me an email with your picks just a little bit early. Let me open that up and have a little look. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God, the horror. <laughs> Look! Look at that! Look right. <laughs> okay, so one collection that I, I okay, saying that I hate a watch is really rare because I, I'm yeah, a we're huge just doing believer this for fun, that, that. I mean, yeah, this is just yeah, a bit yeah, of fun. Yeah. But this collection is just bad, man. Like the Ralph Lauren Polo watch collection. Damn. I th <laughs> come on, man. The last time I saw watches like these are in a diesel a shop. You know the brand diesel have like exactly. ridiculously big watches yeah. and the oh my god, Police these watches. looks like souvenirs. <laughs> you guys get them from a fun fair. Um, <laughs> listen, this is right. The, I mean, I've got to say that. I mean, these got these kind of went under my radar. So. Um, until I saw the picture, and then I remember that Houdinki did something on them. And I'm a big like Ralph Lauren fan. I like double Ralph Lauren. You know, you go to the boutique, beautiful clothes, yeah. kind of vintage style. Their clothes. their apparel's are Very awesome. Expensive. You know, three hundred. Yeah, you get four hundred dollar chinos, beautifully put together. Then they come out with a set of watches that literally blow out. You win them in a Christmas <laughs> raffle. Look! Look at look at the first watches. The strap is like. Two tone with <laughs> green half, that doesn't go. <laughs> Man, it's I horrible. can't. I just I don't understand. <laughs> I don't yeah, understand I this. Say. And the font I'll and the font is like I'd say the same as Timex watches. Yeah, Timex watches. Are this better, is I'd say, but you're right. And this is priced at a thousand dollars. Timex. Yeah, Tumax are not pretending to be Ralph Lauren. This is, I think that's the problem I have with them. It's not the watches themselves, because I probably wouldn't even cross my mind to think about them. It's, it's who produces them. Someone that produces yeah. such beautiful clothing, such stylish apparel, just to bring out something so, I'm going to use a bad word, but something so shit. It's so shit, man. That's, that's no, that's the right word. <laughs> that's so shit. <laughs> okay, what's your, what's your pick? Steve it. <laughs> Listen, I've gone with something, and it's not just it's because it came out this year, but it's going to be because of the whole brand existence of this brand. That's the Hublot <laughs> MP11 Red Magic, which comes in at a whopping $87,000 for a, a red, bright red yeah, watch. It just, and there's something about the existence of Hublot. I can't, you know, I know it's petty, and, you know, we, you know, we just not bad mouth on other stuff. People's hard work, but they're just like, who the fuck would wear this? That's another bad story. Who would wear this? It's just like, it's like for Formula One drivers, or like Formula One driver wannabes. I mean, it's just, are you wear it on your Mercedes that is true. day experience? And you're just like, that is true. Some idiot, you know, accountant that's got too much money. There's a random. But <laughs> here's a, the thing. Who blow? Who blow? Who, who, <laughs> yeah. The, the thing I. I, I the thing is that Hublot is trying to, I'd say with the Big Bang, uh, some of these crazy, complicated Big Bangs, they're trying to achieve what brands like MBNF or Jacob & Co is yeah, doing, like sure. really complicated yeah, watches, yeah, yeah. but they're not quite there yet, in my opinion. No, but they're, they're, they're those, just, the watches, I mean, if they're, they're another level, they're like craftsmanship, they're beautiful, I mean, they're not my cup of tea again, but I can see the quality in those watches, I'll never buy them, but I can see the quality, this Hublot, it's like, you just, if you, the person that wears a Hublot watch is the person you don't want to be stuck talking to at a party, that's my feeling of you, it's pretty yeah, hard. Yeah, probably, it's probably a head fudge manager, right? Yeah, exactly, it's like, you try and sidle away from them, you know. I uh, just yeah, I was uh, yeah, I need to go use the bathroom. I'll, I'll be I'll be back in thirty seconds. You never come back. 
Yeah, that's. that's <laughs> you know, I, you, you I don't go. know who would. Yeah, I don't know who would wear this. To be honest. Yeah, why is it so expensive? See, that's the thing. Uh, well, I think there's only a hundred of them, but that's probably there's a hundred too many. But it's like Richard Mill produce um, similar kind of watches, but it's kind of different position. It's, it's so much more interesting. Well, Richard Mill. First of all, a lot of artists likes Richard Mill, and it's like their grail within the community, within、yeah. their community. So they have a really solid audience already. But Hublot is kind of like yeah, they do what. I don't know about Hublot to be honest. <laughs> It's just a, re- a really ambiguous brand, in my opinion. <laughs> That's such a rant. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah. oh god, Hublot man, Hublot man, just be avoided. You picked another one as well, didn't you? Actually,、um, send、yes. me another one. Do you want to mention that one? I mean, yes, to be honest, it's such second... a lovely brand. Such a lovely brand. I love their another watch, but this is just weird to me. This is the Blanc Pon、uh, Bath Bathy Bathy Scaf Bathyscaf Macaron Bathyscaf Macaron Macaron. Yep. Limited edition. Macaron limited edition. It's a, you know it's a green、uh, watch. <laughs> it's a green. No, it's not the green color. It's more of the design of the markers. That oh, what am I with? Let's look at this. That reminded me of like a. I don't know. It's just so empty. It looks so empty. It does actually. The balance is not very nice. And yeah, as we got complete opposite of the watch we mentioned last time about negative space. This has got it completely wrong. Yeah, this is like negative, but not like not sim like not minimalistic. So it's like what. Yeah. It, like just, I can't register what this watch is in my in my brain. So I was like, okay, this is not. I don't really like this watch. That's why.、No. And I feel like the. F- I think the the f- the I wrong strap for the photo. Producing... I feel like. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think the、uh, Blanc Pond not producing many nice watches. I mean, I picked one of those in my growl. Didn't my watches. But it's like I wouldn't buy anything new from them. Don't find、mm. anything new from them interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have that in the Polo. And a Hublot. That is, if you're wearing a blonde one, I'd probably be told you wearing a Hublot will walk across the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's、oh, just weird. Like it's not as bad as the Ralph Lauren, <laughs> but no, that's just, just like,、uh, I don't really like this watch. Yeah, I don't really like this watch. So because、yeah. also one thing about this year is that a lot of brands. Uh, went with slimmer case and smaller watches because、yeah. I think that's a trend now, right? And then a lot of brands like Doxa and Rolex decided to put out a, you know, multicolored、uh, series. And you know what? While we're on that、oh. note, why don't we? Why don't we talk? What a, a beautiful bit, segue,、uh, right? What a beautiful segue. And why don't we talk a little bit about <laughs> the new Rolex、uh, release? Because, like, to be honest.、Well, Uh, Doxa, Doxa did the same thing. Nomos did the same thing, and Rolex did the、uh-huh. same thing. And all of I just don't like all of them. <laughs> it's <laughs> not even it's yeah, not even a Rolex thing. To say、guess. as is. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's been thousands of words spoken, thousands of words written on these new releases from Rolex.、Um, I guess we're talking about the the、uh, Oyster Perpetual Thirty Six Mil. In, I've written in them colors on this because it's like I couldn't think of another one describing. Got to say, I don't like any of them. I mean, I can, I can see why they've done it. I guess they try to make a more casual, fun approach to Rolex. They're not、Maybe. me. I mean, I don't hate them, but I would never buy one. If someone gave me one, I'd be very disappointed.、Uh, I don't know if they're the same with the forty mil. But the, but the colors themselves are not that interesting, are they? The pink and they're just they're just a little bit more strange choices. I think I'm wrong. To be honest, I I quite like I quite like the turquoise teal one because、uh, okay. this I I、yeah. feel like this color series is more like a fashion thing instead of Rolex trying to do anything. It's just more you know、uh, we're going to provide more color so you guys can you know do whatever you want with dressing it up you know however you want. But it's one thing, as I said、uh, in the last episode that I made, is that 
it's the it's how people react to it that grinds my gear because rolex they know they understand that they have the power to move you know yeah to do whatever they want and actually market themselves however they want right because they're rolex and people just went crazy when the color series dropped and i was like okay it's not that big of a deal right so much out there so i know so That's, many people like yeah. this it's like like a one thing one sweep yeah, the world and it's like <laughs> don't worry about exactly it. one the i feel like the only good thing about the oyster perpetual is that they uh made a 41 instead of 39 because you know how as like watch collectors like i wouldn't say i'm a collector but watch lovers like us uh, we would sometimes determine if we want to buy the watch if the watch is above 40 or below 40. And before they have yeah. two below 40 watches. So that kind of may, that may, you know, stun one of their, uh, you know, maybe it will stun the 36 uh, sales or maybe the 39 sale because they're both sub 40. But now at 41, 40, 36, it's like a clear cut between. So you know which one to go okay, to when you yeah. want to buy. So I'd say that's a yeah, I never, smart thing to do for them. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, but that's a really good point. I think that the first six mil is like, what's quite smart is it's unisex size. So they're, you know, mm. everything's moving away from um, sort of gender specific now, isn't it? You know, the whole, the whole, the way we see clothing yeah. and jewelry is moving in that direction. So I think Rolex has been really smart by bringing out first six mil because it's like, that means it's gender neutral. Anyone can own one. Yeah. Um, Forty-one mil. I prefer the thirty-nine mil size. But now you've said that, that kind of makes sense to me. They kind of differentiate between these two. It's like there definitely is a difference between a thirty-six and a forty-one. It's a different person's going to buy them. It's not. A, it's not going to be yeah. like, oh, which one do I get? You like you know immediately. So I guess you're, yeah, that's yeah. a really good point you raise actually. So yeah. and I can I can see why. Just, the I I yeah. Mil. I get it. To be honest, no hate, but, you know, no hate towards the, yeah, no hate towards the new release. No. It's just how people react to it that that got that got me ranting. Yeah, me too. It's like the amount of pages. I mean, you just look at the the, the, the forums or even the comments on you know, Houdinki. It's just like, oh God's sake. I I, I, I sometimes so I, I hold back I hold back on on the Submariner because I don't want to come off as you know ignorant or anything because first of all I'm not really. Like an like a watch expert, but when the Submariner went from what a, a forty to forty one, people celebrate yeah. that one millimeter difference like the second coming of Jesus. Like what? <laughs> I don't understand. I, I actually don't understand. That, it's sure. one. <laughs> it's one millimeters really that much of a difference? I, I mean, they're, okay, they yeah. they had a gear upgrade, right? They bump it from bump it yeah, from uh, the movement i believe yeah 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 48 to 70 hour power reserve yeah. Yeah, but then they were like oh my god it used to be 40 well. millimeters now it's 41 man it's a oh my god it's so different how different can you even tell if i put two watch in front of you well, one's if, 40 one's okay 40. so you see on the <laughs> i sent you a pdf <laughs> in there i'm sure the listeners can do the same if you are there and just there's a kind of old and new next to each other can you I mean, you can tell the difference when you really look at it, but there's not much difference. I think the lugs are slightly smaller on the uh, new one to make the profile of the watch feel smaller. Um, it's a classic design. They're not going to change it that much. It's a submariner. It's just, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what I say. I don't, yeah, don't, I don't sweat I don't it. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It's just... Because, you know, it's, it's because of Rolex doing some... It's because Rolex doing something like this and how people reacting to it, brands like Oris, brands like JLC are super yeah. overshadowed when they... Of course, right? yeah. I mean, sad. they, they are the, the brand leader. See. Yeah, they're so much ahead of the game, aren't they? They're so much ahead of everyone else. Yeah, we, yeah I, they, I they kind set, of... They set, yeah. I mean, they don't, they don't set the tone, they, set their own, they, they move to their own kind of beat, don't they? So. Okay, so but overall in 2020, do you like um, the current situation in in the watch community or watch world? I'd say. Yeah, I think I do. I think it's like you know when this um, pandemic started, everyone was worried that this would be the end. 
Um, but there's this lots of new, lots of new interesting stuff, and I do like the smaller sizes. That's something that I really like. Yes. Both of us really like that. Uh, I mean, there's other watches I picked that didn't make my um, final pick, like the Bolt Aqua Scaff Bronze and little indie, you know, smaller companies making really beautiful watches. The Rise of Mont Blanc. Um, mm. There seems to be, I mean, that kind of um, heritage style is still really strong. Mm, yes, it's something yes, I yes. really like. And a lot of people are kind of like, you know, you know vintage style loom, a lot of people kind of down on. But for me, I, I, I really like it. I like looking back to the past. Um, I think the Rolex <laughs> yes, is kind of interesting yes. because they've not, they've, not done, they've not done that because they've done their own thing. But, I, but everyone else is still on that. I wonder what next year is going to hold. I mean, we're going to move. Yeah, they have, they have gone... Of. They have gotten rid of the the like completely the older version of Submariner, I think. Yeah, completely yeah, off off their and catalog. the thirty nine OP is completely gone now as well. Um, I wonder if they're going to update the um, Explorer One. That'd be quite interesting. Which is the most classic of classic watches. I mean, the moment they go bigger with that, I mean, that's a thirty nine mil now. Thirty six Explorer is still still the nicest for me, but. Whether they're going to up yeah. the size of that, give that a new case uh, next year, it's possible. I mean, we could speculate. We want Rolex does whatever it wants, so you know. <laughs> I just wish say. Rolex would, you know, maybe out of, like anniversary. I don't know. Bring back like a like a classic design of something. People would bring be so grateful for that. Rolex, uh, Ro yeah. Rolex Explorer One, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Just but bring something like back say, instead of yeah, instead of keep creating something new. I mean, so called new, but just bring something back. Well, they're just kind of you know tweaking what they already have. I mean, the, the, the colored faces the dials is um, I keep saying faces when you dial. Sorry, uh, it, it's a bold move. So that's interesting. I tell you what, but going back to when you asked the question, you know, do I like what's happening? What I do like is the the quality stuff at the lower price points. You know, your mm. Oris. And your yes, 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 yes. Um, the quality of Seiko. I think that's what I really like. That's the thing. That, you know, there's a chance for everyone to get into the hobby. Yes, yes, price. yes. You yes. don't have to spend fifty-eight thousand pounds on a, a ridiculous Hublot to have a watch that people don't respect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Seiko. Yeah, it's really I nice. It's really nice anyone. to see uh, smaller brands to. Uh, okay. Once again, I, I'm so like I'm always scared to make comments like these because I'm not like experienced enough to actually know if these smaller brands just recently made a name for themselves. But from what I can tell, yeah. um, like brands like Longines, Oris, JLC, all these, I, I, yeah, these brands recently they've put out a lot of really nice watches that um, had a huge potential to actually. Uh, go toe to toe to a lot of the big brands, which is nice to see. Even Baltic, yeah. right? Even Baltic, a uh, micro brand. They're great. Um, they're great. Yeah, they're great. They're great. So, which is a really nice thing to see. Just fair competition for. I mean, not fair, but at least they got a chance now. <laughs> yeah, the Equiscope Gap is just fantastic. A friend of mine has one. The um, I mean, twelve-hour bezel is just really beautiful, and it's like six hundred pounds. So it's, it's just superb. Um, um, also, yeah. Breitling, I did kind of one of my things. Breitling are kind of having a bit of a resurgence as well. That's quite kind of nice to see. They kind of, in, they kind of been a bit dull the last few years, but now they're bringing out some really nice new stuff. Breitling, so that's good to see. Yeah, well. that's true. That's true. That's true. Okay, then. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast oh, today. Pleasure. Lovely, lovely list. Lovely episode. I love doing the list off kind of episode and the guessing game it's always fun to do oh, i didn't speak about uh, my new watch i just remembered right no go ahead go ahead go ahead <laughs> oh, i've got to sign off with it this is a lesson i think i put it on um adrian from bark and jack's got a facebook group that mentioned that it did the same thing it's like it's like a, written off the tudor black bay because it's like 58 mm -hmm. being like you know i guess i don't you don't want to own what everyone else owns it's much less, of, you know, you don't want to be told what to like, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, went to the Selfridges, tried it on, 
and just loved it. And it's like, oh, I never thought that I would like it when I saw it in the flesh and I didn't. And now I have it. And it's just like, it's a lesson, like, don't just look at stuff online, I guess. You have to get out there and try it on. And that's the, um, because I kind of wanted something completely different, but it's just when you saw it, it kind of fits everything I really like. It has, it's really delicate size. It's so, I've got to have it here, I'll have it on. It's only 39 mil, it's like 11 mil thick. Yeah. Um, slightly creamy loom, but not like over the top. Matte dial. It's just really well proportioned. It's maybe just maybe sometimes things are um, they are worthy of their hype. Often they're not. Let's be honest. But this kind of was. And that's why I felt you know just just it's, it's the lesson that I felt you know. Bleh. No, this is lovely. I didn't this watch is lovely. Like it because I f I just thought that you're supposed to like it. Does that make sense? And then I go in there. Actually, I do like it. So there you go. Now I have mm. one. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> yeah, are well, you wearing it right now? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah it looks really bang nice. Bang it on the table to show you, but I'm not going to. Um, I've yet to take a nice picture, proper nice picture of it, but I will do that. Um, I'll get a chance. Yes, definitely. One definitely. The, the first time when at you. One point, but I will do. Yeah. I'm gonna have a little when you first when you first showed me the watch, I was like, "Oh my god, you actually you actually pulled the trigger!" Hell yeah! Like I was so happy. I I've never like so it's, what it's so that? rare, and yeah, it's so yeah. it's so it's so rare that I I get to uh, be a part of the whole journey from just thinking about it to actually buying it. <laughs> yeah. I know, I've been telling yeah. you about it. I was going to do it for ages, and it's like, but I went in a completely different direction. It kind of surprised myself as well, but... No, I just... But that's, that's kind a, of a lesson learned, isn't it? You just go, go and look at stuff. If you can. Yeah. I don't know if you have a what, boutique show in Vancouver, but... Um, yeah, I mean, they're quite... I mean, what's nice I, is you can I will... In, they're quite happy to yeah, I, try stuff on, and that's what's really nice. Maybe... Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll try to, but I just don't feel right to go into a boutique yeah. to try watches on oh, without actually having a little no bit of wealth. <laughs> this is yeah, another feel... podcast, I think. <laughs> it's going to be another That's rant, true. along with the uh, forum podcast. <laughs> we should do a rant about the forum. Even. Yeah. Hell, oh my god, we should talk about. Yeah, we should talk about watch forum uh, another episode. But thank you once again. Yeah. Boutiques. Really lovely episode. Um, Pleasure. Would love to do another one with you. Yes, and hope you guys liked it today. All our top picks for 2020s, and I will post maybe the pdf or like the pictures we picked uh pictures of watches we picked on to the instagram so you actually can look at it while listening to the podcast thank you once again for tuning in with us it's gareth once again and ryan thank you goodbye and this is gentleman pursuits podcast and thank you i'll see you guys in the next video